Nicholas Roach joins up with uh, Diagnos and two Irishmen on the attack. Is that Froome who's come across? One of the Skyriders has come in across with uh, Nicholas Roach to join Philip Diagnon. If it is, there'll be a few panic buttons being pressed at HTC now. Froome can uh, climb very, very well. He's another great time trialist. He's only at a handful of seconds down, 26 seconds, if it is him. I haven't, we haven't seen who it is yet. Actually, it doesn't look like his style out of the saddle. This is Roach powering on. It is Froome. It is Froome, yes. Christopher Froome has come across the gap with Nicholas Roach. He'll be pleased that Roach went on the attack and they will work hard at this. Not got too much of an advantage over the peloton, but he's only 26 seconds down on the general classification. Ooh, it's going to be a spectacular finish. Yeah, I'm going to have to start trying to think and pick out who's, uh, which sprinters are left in this group now because it does look like it's still around 60 riders or so, mm. maybe a little bit less, but uh, you'd expect one or two uh, strong finishes to still be in there. nice as it is to see Chinese forest it will be lovely to see the front of the peloton right now and the front of the race and we may well pick it up in just a second but Christopher Froome has made his move along with Nicholas Roach Philip Dignan was the man who was setting the pace and jumping across the gap Roche and onto the wheel of Roche was uh, Sky's Chris Froome HTC must feel confident that they they can control the distance between the two of them. Now. Yeah, well, we saw before when um, HTC were doing the uh, chasing after the uh, previous climb that there was only two other teammates there. So hopefully, uh, for Tony Martin's sake, that is, that, that uh, he's still got a couple of teammates there because uh, this is a good move by uh, Froome. And uh, the good thing is he's, he's, he's had a go. Um, you know, he has set uh, the cat amongst the pigeons. Uh, yeah. As he... yeah. He's not shy of having an attack, is he? was one of... And it's a good group. It is good. Very good. Very strong group. It, it was one of the ple biggest pleasures of commentating uh, in the past year. And certainly one of the nicest mountaintop attack finishes I've seen in a long time when he uh, stuffed it up the inside of Kobo. Uh, having been caught by... Having attacked Kobo very, very hard. And then Kobo regathered his forces in the welter, this is, of course. Regathered his forces and rode magnificently, I have to say, up to the wheel of uh, Chris Froome again. Um, in order, And then gone past him and it looked like it was all over. And then Froome thought, I'm not having that. And in the last 50 metres came up the inside of him on the last hairpin. And I thought that was a real battle that just shows that what the what sort of rider he is he's such a quiet unassuming rider when you talk to him off the bike but he's he really is a born attacker yeah yeah and um you know let's hope um well i'm gonna say hope i'm i'm sure he will to go on from there because uh, cycling at the end of the day has always been a uh, a confident sport and uh, you know success does mm. breed confidence it, sometimes you just need that breakthrough uh, performance or a win and uh, you go on from there and uh, I think uh, I think he's, uh, we might see a lot more of uh, Chris Froome over the next couple of years who would have believed it when we first saw him off that start ramp in uh, Salzburg I think it was my, Salzburg, uh, where he crashed into the commissaire. Yeah, my outstanding memory of his um, was he went over the edge on the in the tour a couple of years ago. Do you remember yes, that? Indeed, <laughs> that yeah. That was a bit scary moment. Is that Col de la Bonnet? I can't remember. Yeah, that's right. That is a scary climb. That actually, the, the runoff off the uh, the side of that. Yes, and uh, he had to drag himself back up from the gravel. Hello, Same what's going thing. on here? Oh, 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 was it called a rider? Oh, it's oh called a rider. my word. Yeah. yeah. Huge gust of wind. Unbelievable. I've never seen that before. Oh, and the motorcyclist stops just in time. <gasps> Shh. I hope he stopped just in time. Oh, it's one of the BMC oh, it's riders. It's Walter again, is it? He's, he's going to be uh, in not great condition, that, because... Uh, that was that, a whack and he, half. That would, he had no warning of that. That's often the case, you know. Sometimes yeah. you, you, you know you're going to crash almost, and so you, you sort of almost prepare yourself. But I think there he just... He wouldn't have known almost anything about that. A bit like the Hugoland crash in the, the Tour de France. Oh, that is a problem with um, with the bike races and wind when you get these advertising boards up. We've, we've had it on a couple of events in uh, in England this year on uh, oh dear. tour series particularly. That's horrid. It's 
especially when you get these sort of um, valleys and ravines, the wind well, swirls around. Well, it just funnels around, it in, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. This is the uh, descent then into run towards the finish. A pretty much all downhill towards the finish now and these guys are going to have to motor really hard to pull out a gap the roads are very very good here although it is twisting and turning you do run the risk as we saw with Yanis Brakovic of overcooking it pretty easily because it's such a fast uh, road surface you think ah I can go down this really really quickly but we've got some very quick men behind Tony Martin will not want to let this one get away and he'll have his HTC men on the front Albacini is pretty good at this sort of stuff and Martin himself but we've also got Luis uh, Leon Sanchez wanting to uh, perhaps do something Nicholas Roach is not going to be attacked by uh, Jean-Christophe uh, Perrault who's behind he's going to be shadowing Tony Martin assuming he's not uh, super stiff from the crash he had yesterday this is a good this is great for Nicholas Roach and Dignan, but in the uh, in the sprint in the end, you'd have to oh. favour Roach, would you not? Sorry, we'll just uh, <laughs> get a little bit nervous. I've seen those barriers now. So spectators start to walk across the road. <laughs> yeah. All taking uh, their turns on the front. But well, Froome has the most to gain here. Well, Dignan. <laughs> Dyken's the man who started the move, and uh, he'll be very thankful he's got these two men with him, I would think, uh, Graham. Yeah, it's been Roach awful. Is, yeah, Roach is the guy who's going to go for this, the sprint fin finish. Froome's the man who's going for the GC. Dyken's there thinking, right, great, these two guys are going to take yeah. each other. I've always got a chance. Yeah, but they've all, yes, I say, they've all got uh, an interest in uh, making sure that this, or trying to make sure that this breakaway succeeds, but it's still going to be a difficult task. Um, mm. You know, that is a fairly large group behind. Still there, though. Quite so. We might get a shot of the peloton soon. Get an idea of the gap. Into this uh, bit of plateau now. Running towards the finish with uh, Christopher Froome. His uh, obvious time trialing ability being put to good use here. And Dignan beginning. Is he struggling a little yeah. at the back? Not hanging about. No, they are not. And I'm not at all sure that uh, although they're going okay at the moment that. Dignan in particular will be capable of coming through towards the end if they keep this sort of pace up. Latest gap we've got, I've just seen 12 seconds, I think, is the gap, so it's not really as inside the last five kilometres, so uh, it could be very difficult with just 12 seconds. Well, we'll get the shot in a minute of where they are. There we are. Yeah, may not, it may not even be 12 seconds now. This looks is the leading group. Looks like HTC, doesn't it, on the front? And where is Tony Martin's group? There is the Tony Martin, you have to assume, is in that group. Froomey saying, come on, we've got to keep working together. Yep. Dagnan takes a pull. Froome goes through just as if he's... Uh, oh. uh, just as if he's not trying, really, compared to... to uh, Dagnan and Roche. There's a group of about 20 riders. Yeah, there's a split, behind I think, in the yep. peloton there. There's, there's just another it. group behind, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I think they're about to be caught. Well, good attacking uh, move by Nicholas Roche and uh, Chris Froome to get across to Philip Dyken. But I fear that they're not going to be able to stay away. Froome, knows that. Looking over his shoulder. Sorry about the picture breakup, by the way. But there is the whole peloton as well. Um, and barring all incident, you'd have to think now that uh, Tony Martin is looking pretty pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, we did uh, think before the stage that he probably would have a, a chance, and uh, he, he himself said that uh, he felt reasonably confident about being able to uh, to hang on to the jersey, and uh, it looks like that's the case. In fact, the peloton, just looking there, the peloton's in three little groups, isn't it? group of about 15 and another group of about 10 and then just behind under 30 meters or so it's another group so uh, this may well all come back uh, to one uh, fairly large group as somebody writing in uh, about the Col de Bonnet you're right actually it was John Lee Augustine who went straight over the top when they were both riding for Barlow at the time uh, went straight over the top and down the gravel slope and had to drag his bike back up but Chris Froome also <laughs> crashed on the same mountain on the descent further on down 
didn't go that spectacular shot over the top where he's sort of dragging the bike back up. I'm pretty mm. sure that was Augustine, but uh, uh, further on down, Froomey came off as well. As did not, didn't Menchov come off as well? I can't remember. Diagnant Froome, Roach, and then the group of 20 eating up into them. They're holding them off at the moment. Gap looks like it's opened up a little bit, just a touch. They are holding them off, they're not giving in. Certainly not. Within the last five kilometres, there's no bonuses, of course, but uh, you can pull out four or five seconds here on, uh, on the opposition. Tony Martin and team are going to have to take this one by the scruff of the neck. Martin, the world time trial champion, is going to have to use his obvious abilities to do something about it. About 100 metres, maybe. Diagnant. The man who uh, launched it, I... I'm not sure Diagnant knows whether this... Well, he is wanting to contribute too much to this. He, thinks he knows this one's going to get caught. Froome, of course, is wanting to pull on. All back together behind. The group of 20 has been joined by the rest of the peloton. One kilometre to go uh, for these men. And Froome will uh, try and push on. If he gets to the front now, he'll try and push on as much as possible. Roach will try and sit in the wheel because he wants the sprint win. Diagnan's just going to take everything that's given to him, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's the first one. To, he was the one who attacked initially, wasn't he? So uh, they've got a chance, actually. As long, providing they don't hesitate, and it's maybe something like Chris Froome drives all the way to line. There's about 500 metres to go, if that now. Not just coming up 500 metres to go. They've got a chance, and they may well just hang on. Peter Zagan's team of... Uh, Liquid gas pulling on, you'd stick that Sargon in second spot, can't quite see the jersey but uh, it may well be fit, they've also got Viviani and Os of course, very good sprinters that they are, no no it's not, uh, it looks like Os in fact. Roach is going for the sprint victory. Dignan's with him. A surprise, he's just sprinting so well. Is Roach going to get in? He's just about going to hold off. Nicholas Roach takes the win from Philip Dignan. A, an Irish 1-2. Chris Froome, I think, is uh, just about gets third. Thank goodness not people walking across the front there. Um, didn't see the third spot, to be honest. But a great win for Nicholas Roach. He said he wanted to get something out of this. What uh, this tour would have been like with time bonus as well. Only things can tell. But uh, the finish here in Yong Ning. A win for Ireland and a second place as well. Terrific stuff. Yeah, great performance. And, uh, you know, those three riders really worked well um, together. So they all had an interest in uh, trying to make that breakaway uh, work it doesn't always work out sometimes we get a breakaway a little bit of hesitancy but they just went for it all the way to the line and uh, a very good win i'm not sure whether Froome did hang on for third yeah i'm not sure either but uh, it was difficult to tell because he got out of the shot let's have a look from uh, absolutely uh, hammering himself nicholas roach always the man to uh, to take the sprint i think and had enough time to ease up a bit. There we go. Nearly a bike length. Where is Froome? On the right-hand side of the shop. Ooh, it's close. Roach takes it. Michael Barry in the background there, you can see. There's a fairly disparate group of, <laughs> of riders behind. All sorts of different types of riders. Not just sprinters. Yeah, and uh, Froome driving for the line. He does get third. And then I think it might have been Gavadzi. We've got fourth. Difficult to tell. 